Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today I want to talk about some of the comments that I get in the video section where people are saying that, you know, one bait copies another bait and it's just a knockoff and therefore you shouldn't buy a company's bait. You know, I work with Berkeley. A lot of people are like, well, Berkeley just made the Chapo and the Chapo is a blatant knockoff with a Whopper Plopper. Well, Guys, I got news for you. Like, it's about innovation in the industry. And if you think Whopper Plopper is the river to see Whopper Plopper is the original tallywhacker or plopper style bait, you're completely off base. And that's what I want to talk about today is how the sport continues to innovate. And a lot of that innovation comes off baits that were made a hundred years ago. You know, in my opinion, a lot of it is about improving a bait. There are a ton of ideas that I have. There are a ton of ideas that other people have and you come up with it and you just can't get it to work perfectly right. And when that happens, you may come, you may, some companies produce it and come out with it. And generally what happens is the people that use it aren't satisfied either and the baits put on the shelf and it's not used any longer. Some companies don't ever even produce it and they just put it on the shelf, maybe coming back to revisit in the future. You know, whether technology gets better or they just decide they come up with a better way to make that bait. And it's one of those things where I think as long as the sport continues to evolve, we're in a good place. And if if somebody can take a bait and improve it or they can make it different with a different sound, a different look, a different vibration, you're making changes to a bait. You know, I think this is one of the reasons why you don't see one bait conquer in all situations because baits are made for different uh, techniques. They're made for different times of the year, different water temperatures, different lakes even. I mean, you have, you have fish up north that don't react necessarily the same way as fish down south. So when you're talking about a bait, you know, like the Chapo, which people say is a knockoff of the Whopper Plopper, well, you can go and look at the musky industry and find tons and tons of big plopper style baits that have been around forever. In fact, guys, the people that, the individual, Larry Dahlberg, that has his name on the Whopper Plopper is a diehard muskie fisherman. All he did was take a big plopper style bait. You know, this is a Thai Senate old pacemaker, one of my favorites. But all he did was take one and add a soft tail on the back, which he thought would increase hookups. You know, in this case, most of the ploppers in the musky world are big metal blades like this. And therefore his thought was if a fish comes up and grabs the blade, he may not get a good hook set. So he went to, wa to river to sea and they designed a soft tail for the whopper plopper. You know, Chapo's come out well with their own version, which is different, has a different vibration, has a little different sound to it. It's up to you guys to decide whether you like it or not, but it's one of those things where the bait you know, baits are innovating off of other baits and other ideas. You know, you look at the Senko. The Senko is a great example of that, where every company has a Senko, and there are tons of different versions out there. Some sink faster, some sink slower, some have a tighter wobble, some have a wider wobble, some have sense, some don't have sense. It doesn't mean one is right. It doesn't mean one is wrong. People give the Senko kind of that first, uh, the that first to market, and they give the credit to Gary Yamamoto for coming up with the Cinco as he deserves. But that's really what it comes down to. It's the innovation. There are lots of other baits out there. You know, a few years ago, we saw the Jackal Pompadour come, come to market. And people are like, that's so crazy. That's so cool. You know, it's, it's, it's awesome innovation. Well, guys, you can go back 100 years and look at the Head and Crazy Crawler. And that's pretty much the exact same bait. You know, the musky world, again, has been making creeper style baits for a long, long period of time, a lot longer than the Jackal Pompadour has. But everyone has their own twist on it. And that's really what it comes down to. You've got companies out there that are trying to innovate off of existing baits to make them better. <clears throat> In my opinion, that's how our sport gets better. We continue to make things bigger and better and hopefully therefore catch more fish. They become better tools for us. You know, the, the drop shot is just a variation of what, what a lot of live bait fishermen have been using for years called a perch rig. I mean, that was it's uh, if you go to the Great Lakes and you fish for perch, they've been using the drop shot a lot longer than bass anglers have. Uh, you know, you got hair jigs out there, various hair jigs that we now are starting to really use to crush smallmouth bass on and spotted bass and largemouth. 
they're basically just a variation of a fly that's been around forever because somebody wanted to be able to cast a fly that they were catching fish on with a fly rod on spinning gear. So they added a little weight to it. The key here is, you know, when I get the comments from somebody who's just so solid that something is a knockoff, right? It may be the latest and greatest version of a bait that's out there. But generally speaking, it's a new version of a bait that's the fifth or sixth version already of a bait that potentially has been around for a hundred years. I mean, there is a lot of baits coming to market right now that are going back and looking at the old baits by Creek Chub or Head and Dwaziak or Fluger and getting ideas off of those baits. So it's really difficult for me to, to accept the idea that companies are knocking off each other. They may be using the idea of a bait and trying to make it better, but that's what we all should be doing. We should all be trying to become better, right? So the idea here is we're trying to catch more fish. We're trying to be, become better anglers. I mean, that's what this channel is about. So we're trying to figure out ways that there are existing baits or techniques, whether that's a rod and reel or electronics, whatever it is, we're trying to get better. Now, there may be a whole nother argument there of how good is too good. You know, at what point do we truly have too much of an advantage on the fish? But at this point, I'm just talking about baits and there still is not one bait yet that I truly feel is, is taking away the advantage to the fish. I mean, there's some good fish catching tools out there but they generally don't work in all situations. So let me know in the comment section, do you disagree? Do you agree? Are we just trying to make better baits with cooler paint schemes and different sounds and different vibrations? Or is it all about knockoff? Are we truly just stealing from one company to another company? So let me know in the comment section, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and stay tuned. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow for you.